Number seven ministries. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news. Hello, welcome to Number Seven Ministries Christian Outreach. Today's short sermon is called Who Did You Bring to Jesus? And I know as soon as I mention or I give that question, Who Did You Bring to Jesus? I can see a lot of religious spirits and demons rise up in pride and say, I brought millions to Jesus, I brought thousands to Jesus, or I was in big stadiums and there was a mega ministry and all these souls were one to Jesus. Well, the truth is, is that actually nobody can bring someone to Jesus. Jesus said, no one comes to me except for they be sent by my Father. So it's actually all to God's glory and credit. However, when we get saved, when we become born again, our mission is not just so that we can be happy and content with our own salvation, not that we could just be content with God's love, but that we can share the love of God with other people. And when God saved me and he changed me, I knew with a, without a shadow of a doubt that he loved me. But shortly after that, I realized that God didn't save me just for myself. As, as much as God loved me, as much as he wanted to help me and change me, it wasn't just for me. It was actually so I can go out and share the love of God with other people so that I could actually testify that there is hope beyond people's trouble. There's hope beyond addictions. There's hope beyond sickness. God has done a lot of miracles in my life and God has uh, issued me and assigned me and called me and anointed me to share the love of God with as many that are willing to hear, to testify to as many that are willing to le listen. So with this message, who did you bring to Jesus? The question is this, is that when you do have the Holy Spirit inside of you, are you going to keep him to yourself? Because I guarantee that the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to reach out and touch other people. And I want to read this Bible verse is Matthew chapter 15, verse 22 through 28. A Canaanite woman, other versions say a Gentile woman from this vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord. She said, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said unto her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted and her daughter was healed at that moment. This is what I want to do. I want to pick apart the events that led up to this miracle that took place. First of all, I want to emphasize that this woman was not going to Jesus for selfish needs. She was going to Jesus on behalf of someone else. All right, she was desperately in need of a miracle for her daughter. All right, the first order event that you see that took place is she begged. She begged. All right. The second thing that took place is after she begged, Jesus ignored her. Jesus ignored her. And I believe that it's possible the reason why Jesus ignored her had nothing to do with her. It's because Jesus, I believe, was actually testing his disciples to see how would they respond to the woman. And if you read the Bible, it says that they actually tried to send her away. The disciples of Jesus Christ, those that were closest to God, that saw the miracles of God, that received miracles from God their own selves, they were trying to block this woman's miracle. They were actually getting in the way and interfering with this woman's daughter from being delivered from demon possession. 
So my question is to us, do we ever interfere with another person trying to get Jesus? And I believe we could do it by many ways, putting uh, countless burdens on people through uh, religious man-made ordinances that are not even biblical. But so I believe the reason why Jesus remained quiet for the moment is because he was testing his disciples. He wanted to see what their reaction was. And their reaction was they were trying to block her from see, uh, for receiving a miracle. The next event that took place after the disciples tried to block her, it says that she worshiped him and pleaded with him and she got on her knees and she started to beg him. All right. And then after that, Jesus indirectly called her a dog. Indirectly, he called her a dog. How many of us are going to go to church looking for a, a miracle for our mother, our daughter, our brother, a family member that we love and that are demonically oppressed, possessed, and the pastor calls us a dog? How many of us would never, ever go back to that church ever again and we would curse that church from the ground up? And Jesus called this woman indirectly a dog. And look what she did after that. She agreed that she was a dog. She said yes. And then she humbled herself again after being called a dog and after admitting that she was a dog. And then she begged him again. All right. And then finally it says Jesus healed her daughter. And all that she did, she did it not for herself. She did it for someone else. She was relentless. She was determined. She was persistent. She loved her daughter that much that she was willing to be rejected by Jesus' disciples. She was willing to be uh, publicly disgraced and humiliated by being called a dog. She got to her knees and she begged God. How many of us in the church, when we bring someone to the house of God, are we so prideful and arrogant, acting as if we deserve a healing? See, you're never going to receive anything from God when we come to God with, uh, with uh, arrogance, with pride. The only way that we're ever going to receive a miracle from God and a healing for ourselves or our loved ones is through humility. John chapter 8 verse 3 the teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said, Jesus, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. And the law, Moses, commanded us to stone such woman. Now, what do you say? See, this is the thing. You have that these Pharisees and these scribes, they brought the woman to Jesus, but their motives and their intentions were not for good. In the end, it ended up helping the woman that they brought, they caught her, and they threw her at Jesus. In the end, they ended up doing her a favor. The reason why they did her a favor because Jesus ended up having mercy on her and he forgave her and gave her a proper counseling, told her to go and sin no more. But the thing that I wanna emphasize is this, is that you have people in the church that are bringing people to Jesus, but they're not bringing to Jesus and the right reason or for right with the right motives they have an agenda they have a hidden uh, motives but even when people have bad intentions and a hidden agenda god can still take what's meant for good or meant for evil and turn it around for good and i want to mention this is that right here on my patio you can see that this right here is the actual real plant right and then with the whole majority, the thing that looks obvious, it looks so bright, it looks so strong, is actually a fake plant. This is actually not real. But in with the fake plant, you can see that there is actually real plants. And sometimes in the church, the things that look to be the strongest, the things that look to be the brightest, the things that look to be the most flamboyant are actually the things are, that are not even real. It's actually fake and phony. But the thing that looks to be small and insignificant and what died the leaf just fell off of it that looks to be nothing is actually the real genuine plant 
And that's how it can be in the church. We have to use discernment to see what is what. God bless you and have a wonderful day.